How many know God is still good? Yes. Amen. And I know that you need this word today. Amen. This word is going to be prophetic. It's going to transform your life. So I need you to get your notepads. I need you to get your tablets out. I need you to get ready for the word and let's kick some devil's butt. Amen. Yes. Amen. God has come to transform your life. And he wants an inward transformation. Now, the Bible says in John, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. God has come that you may be free. Amen. And it's the word of God that changes you. Now, I can lay hands on you. I can cast the devil out of you. But bottom line, after all is said and done, what's going to keep you is the word of God. Amen. So it's important that we put a, a, a premier emphasis on the word of God. Amen. And God, turn to your neighbor right now. Say, neighbor, it's good to see you today. But I'm here to let you know God is doing something great in your life. Amen. Amen. You better know that. Every time you go to church, as you're passing people, and then you're seeing their cars are still in the driveway, and they're not getting up, or you see people as you pass the, the park at Swift Cantrell and Aqua Park, people just running around and, 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 and rising up to play. You better know that as you are seeking the face of God, God is doing a work in your life, in your family, in your children, in your community through you. Amen. Amen. Your fasting is not in vain. Your prayers are not in vain. Amen. God is doing something in you and through you. Amen. Let's start third verse again. Amen. Praise God. A time to kill and a time to what? A time to break down and a time to what? A time to weep and a time to what? A time to mourn and a time to what? A time to cast away stones and a time to what? Gather stones, Gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. How many know there's some things you got to let go? Did you hear me, church? A time to embrace and a time to let go. Are you with me? And God, I mean, let me tell you something. God is patient, you know, because we will, we will spiritualize our mess when we don't want to let it go. We will get mad at the people that tells you that you need to let it go. Some of you may be mad at me right now. But you still got to let it go. Say amen like Bob. Amen. Stage, chair. Amen. A time to get and a time to what? Lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to, to keep silence. And a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Next one, please. Balance. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. In the contemporary English version, it says, the Lord detests dishonest scales, but delights in an accurate weight. Everybody say accurate weight. God, Christ has come in your life so that you can have balance. Amen? Keep going. Next slide. Matthew 6 and 33, we said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, and then all things taken together will be given you besides. You've got to aim and strive after him first. Though. Amen? Next slide, please. We said the order that things need to be, what? Was their spears. Amen? We said, now I have spiritual. For everybody say spiritual. How many know you got to take care of your spirit first? Now, most people have it backwards. They want to start with the social. Are you with a social media? It's everything social. Oh, I look good. I, you know what? Everything looked pretty on my social media page, but I'm going through hell right now. Help me, Holy Ghost. But it has to be spiritual. You, everybody, everybody say inward man. Inward. Amen. You need what's on the, you need to start on the inside and then go to the outside. That's when true transformation comes. Let's keep going. Spiritual, then your personal life. Then after your personal life, then your health, because now we're starting to move outward. Amen? We're just still inward, personal health, and then guess what? If you get your health right, then we can start moving outward. You can start learning and educating yourself. Amen? Then you can start what? That are gonna, that's going to grow into your relationships. Everybody say outward. Amen? Employment. How many know your workplace? 
start seeing a difference in you when you're dealing inward. And then you're social. Hallelujah. Notice, above job, above family, above church, above fun and mission is God. Everybody say God first. Now, every, I need everybody say God first. I want you to get to say God first. Not second, not third. How do how you think my wife would like I say, you're the second most important woman in my life? What woman wants to hear that? No woman. She's the first yeah. and the last. Yeah. By everything, amen? That's what she want to hear. She said, don't get it twisted. You are my first and my last and my everything. Are you with me? Yeah. Next one, please. Three A's of transformation. Huh? Three A's. What was the first one? Be authentic. Do it to be your best you. See, when we deal with transformation, we're talking about being changed from the inside out. I'm reviewing right now from the last couple of weeks. Reformation is from the outside in. What does that mean? You change how you look. You know, religion will reform you. They'll teach you how to sound like a Christian. You'll be like, praise the Lord. But you'll be cussing on the inside. Are you with me? But when true transformation comes, it starts with authenticity. You say, the Bible says that God says he's going to raise up worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And that word truth can be translated in the Greek as realness and reality. You got your own reality show if you start looking at your life in the word of God. You don't have to go to Atlanta Housewives. Are y'all with me? You don't have to go married to medicine, amen? Because you married to Jesus. The, the, guess what? The great physician. And you can watch what he's doing in your life and transform it into reality. Secondly, you take action with set, by setting smart goals. Everybody say take action. Take action. You got to take action. You just can't keep talking and talking and talking. And you take action by writing down what God is showing you. You set goals. They're smart goals. What is smart? Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Smart goals. You write them down. You accomplish 90% of what you write down. You accomplish only 30% of what you hear. And what you say. So you just talking, talking. Uh, let me, which one sounds better? 30 out of 100 or 90 out of 100? So just by writing it down. Habakkuk says, you say, what's the scripture says? Write the vision so those that hear it and see it may run with it. Amen. You want your family to run with your vision? Write it down. Well, I don't understand why my kids ain't getting it. I don't understand why nobody else. I don't understand why I ain't getting it. Have you written it down? Well, I got it all up here. I got it all up here. It's like here. I got it all up here. Well, tell me what's up here. If you're serious about your vision, write it down. Thirdly, be accountable. Find accountability partners. Find people that are going to hold you to what you're saying. Amen. And look for account that either be, needs to be lateral or above you. Let me, did you hear me? Lateral or above you. You don't need people beneath you. What are you talking about? People that won't, they, when you tell them, you say, well, I didn't do this today. I didn't do mine either. Oh, we get, we, I guess we all messed up. No, you don't need that person. That's the wrong type of accountability person. You need somebody to say, what, you didn't do it today? Well, okay, well, how are we going to change this? How are we going to get there? What can we do before the day's out where we can change the situation? Are y'all with me? Taking it to the next level. You say, well, why do you have to say that? Because I find out people like they, like, they like getting somebody under them. So they can feel important. So you can get likes. We're in this like generation. You know, having a rough day. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Like. Love. Why are you liking that foolishness? That should be sad face. That should be what's going on. How can I pray for you? Are you with me? I ain't liking that foolishness. I'm not in agreement with that. Are you with me? No, challenge me. You, if I'm putting up there, I'm having a rough day. You need to say, how can I pray for you, pastor? Are you with me? Let's go. Next one. Let's keep going. We talked about coming in alignment. You said we need to be in correct alignment. We can't be too inward or too outward. Too inward, you mean you become selfish. Too outward, you become too selfless. Where well, you're helping everybody, ain't helping yourself. Are you with me? How many of moms and dads can, can become that sometimes? Too selfless. You living around the kids and you not even take care of your inner man. Are you with me? God is a God of what? 
balance. He's a God of balance. Next slide, please. Basic instructions before leaving earth. That's the word of God, the Bible. Let's keep going. We dealt with alignment. Our first alignment prior that we had to do, priority of mindsets. We said Matthew 6 and 24 and 33. Right there. We said watch your thoughts because they what? Watch your words because they become what? Actions. Watch your actions. They become what? Habits. Watch your habits. Our name is become church, right? I hope you see become in that. Amen. Watch your habits. They become what? Character. Watch your character and they become what? It all started with a thought. Where is your thinking? And your thinking is going to be based off your priorities and your mindsets. Are you with me? We say God's order was this. God's priority, spirit, soul, and then body. Not reversed. Not me first, but God's kingdom first. Amen? Keeping the spiritual first. God will give you what you are longing for if you keep him first. Next one, please. We said this, a bad attitude is like a what? A flat tire. Can you go anywhere on a flat tire? You can't go anywhere until you change it. Say, neighbor, it's about time you change that attitude. Oh, some of y'all say, find a neighbor, find somebody. Somebody need you to say this to them. I got to find, say, neighbor. And I do mean neighbor. It's about time you change that attitude. Amen. Amen. Next one, please. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. Everybody says, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. You know, that sounds, that just make you, doesn't that make you hungry? No, it makes you sick. But why, see, uh, uh, why are you returning to the, the same foolishness every year? We're, we're in a new year. Aren't you ready to leave the foolishness behind? I'm not, I'm not looking to be troubled by the same stuff that troubled me in 2018. As a dog returns to us, so a fool returns to his folly. Turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. Come on, turn to your neighbor, say neighbor. Don't be scared of what I'm going to say. I'm just going to let you know I ain't no fool. Oh, amen. Amen. If you can go one, go back one, please. Back one more. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. Turn to it. It says, why do you look at the ins insignificant speck that is in your brother's eye? Because this is what we do. Because the next thing we have to get in alignment is the alignment of self. Everybody say the alignment of self. So many times we're looking so at everybody else and what their problem is. Let me tell you something. You should be 10 times more dealing with yourself than you deal with outside folk. Are you with me? First of all, you're not a victim. What is some reason why we don't look at ourselves? Because we start thinking we're a victim. Turn to your neighbor. neighbor. You are victorious in Christ. You are not a victim. Amen. Amen. You are a victor. Amen. You got to know that. Amen. So you got to look. You got to be willing to look inward. And say, God, and, then, and say, Lord, I don't care if it's scary, Holy Spirit. I, I don't care if what you're going to show me is scary, but you have empowered me to deal with what I see. Because if it's overwhelming, I'm going to give it back to you. Are you with me? Yes. Everybody say introspection. introspection. You got to look inside of yourself. Let's look at this. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. Stop asking me all these questions so I can get into this word. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, why do you look at the insignificant speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice, get this, and acknowledge, and, and acknowledge the egregious log that is in your own eye? Not just a log, but the egregious log. Full verse, or how can you say to your brother, let me get the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. Play actor, pretender. First get the log out of your what? Own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your what? Brother's eye. Whenever some, somebody's talking about a situation and they're talking about everybody else and they ain't talking about what they did wrong, then I know something's wrong. Because either one or two, either you are superhuman, and ain't no superhumans, the only humans that are in power with supernatural God, but even with that, we're still flawed. How many know that? 
and God is still working in us. Amen? And somewhere you have to always approach a situation humbly and understand, guess what? It may be something I could have done differently. That comes to maturity. Amen? Somebody's talking about their marriage, their past marriage, or their past relationship, and it's all the other person's problem. Oh, they did that, they did that. Did. Well, you chose them. Well, amen, like, boy, it got real quiet in here. Amen, like, Bob. Huh? So it started with your choice. Oh, the last church I was part of, it was this and that and that. Well, you chose the church. You stayed. You not to stay. You know, because church folk just do this to you. Well, only if you allow them to. Amen. Always quiet. Amen. You, you, you communicate not only with how you talk, but with your feet. And if I'm in something abusive, you can walk away. Turn your name and say you can walk away. Yeah, just in, in case you didn't know that, okay? You always unpower you. If this becomes a, you can walk away. See, sometimes the Holy Spirit tells us to walk away and we choose not to. And then we want to make everybody pay. Because we weren't obedient. Because I guarantee you, if you were in something that was not healthy, God showed you several times. We just didn't want to hear it. Shows you signals. You know, this is a, and you'd be like, mm, well, I can change them. Mm, they can get better. Mm, I'm going to give them grace. Some of you got more grace than Jesus. Jesus done walked away. The Holy Ghost has left. Are you with me? i never forget, I was helping somebody. God said, God spoke to the Holy Spirit and said, I've left the situation. What you doing here? This was like six months. He said, I left six months ago. What you doing? Because I was like, Lord, why isn't it working? I'm giving them all of this. I'm sowing this into it. He said, I told you to, remember when I told you to release that? You chose to stay. Are y'all with me? Sometimes we want God to bless mess that he ain't even endorsing. And we become enablers of bad behavior. And then we get mad at God because he didn't move the way we wanted him to. Hey, this is, not make, this is not Burger King. It's not the way you want it. Amen? It's the way he wants it. Next slide, please. You can't change your city until you know your state. Amen? You got to know that God is doing something inside of you, that he's working inside of you, and it's for your good and not for your bad. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting something out of this? I hope you are. I hope you are. Next slide, please. Get this. We talked about this. Never try. We said this. You see, there's a sign here. You see a sign for sin, and you see a sign for forgiveness. Never try to cover up your past regrets by making new ones. This is all review from last week. You got to get on Forgiveness Street if you want to change. How many want to change today? I want to change. Amen? Next slide. Okay. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. If you want to change, that's what you got to do. What does it say? It says what? Examine yourself. Examine yourself. You got to be willing to make that examination. Amen? To see whether you are in the faith, test yourselves, or do you not realize that about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away at once and forgets what he looked like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, which is the word of God, the law of liberty, and perseveres being, being no hearer who, who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Amen? Amen. And Psalms 139 verse 1 says, you have Search me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. How many know God knows everything about you? You know and discern my thoughts. The old people used to say this one all the time. From, from afar, you search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways, even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O Lord, 
you know it all together. You know him, me in, and behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Now, Psalms 139 for homework, 1 through 24. Amen? Next slide. Next slide. Now, no, no, go back, go back. I'm sorry. Can y'all see this up here? Okay. You see the baggage, right? What's that? Guilt. Huh? What's that? You see anger and pride? Huh? Hurt? Insecurity? Fear? Huh? You see all that? Pride? Now look, the path is the lessons we learn in life. But here you see this lady trying to carry all of this. And this represents the church. Because we're the bride of Christ, right? We're trying to carry all this. And we're wondering why we can't make it to the next place in God. And God said, now, I want you to go to this place right here. Right? And look, is it big enough for me to go through all this? Huh? I don't understand why I can't go through, Lord. Let it go. Got all this baggage. You see all this stuff I got? Got all this hurt? And I'm trying to go, but I can't fit. Because God never called you to carry all of that. Next slide, please. See, understand this. You can't reach for anything new if your hands are still full of yesterday's what? Junk. God didn't call you to have all that hate and anger and sadness and all that mess that you think you, you some of us think, and, and, and look, and there's that stupidity, that defeated attitude, that resentment. Some of us hold resentment from years. Just years. You're just holding it. It's just, it became you. Look, look, you became fashionable with your junk. Look, you even posing with it now. Huh? Look. Take a picture of me like this. Watch the, take a picture of all this hurt. Get this picture of all this pride. Here we go. Huh? Some of us learn how to look cute with our stuff. We just walk cute with it. You know, you laugh because even when we try to, don't look stupid trying to carry all this stuff. Have you ever seen somebody carrying hurt? And they're looking stupid, but they think they're looking good. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hope that's not you. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I know it's not me. Amen. Because I'm releasing this stuff right now. Amen. Forgive, release, breakthrough, and increase. Forgive, release, breakthrough, and increase. Forgive, release. Breakthrough and increase. You got to let this stuff go. Amen. Next slide, please. First Corinthians eleven twenty. I'm going to keep carrying this. Let a person in what? Examine himself. And so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Talking about communion. But do you understand that for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment where? On himself. And then Paul goes to say, that is why many of you are what? Weak and ill and sick. Why? And even some have died. But if we judge ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Do you understand this healing in communion table? But guess what? When you, when you carry all this baggage and unforgiveness, you take communion, you're going to find yourself getting sick because you haven't let stuff go. It's having a reverse and adverse effect on your walk with God. Say, neighbor, don't say, say God, no, let's talk to God. Now, God, I forgive. Come on, everybody say that. It's the F word. Y'all ready for the F word? Say, Lord, Lord I forgive. forgive. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I just said the F word. The good one. Amen. Amen. Do you see next time when you see somebody say, have you said the F word today? Have you forgiven me? Huh? Have you forgiven me? You want your relationship? You want your marriage to thrive? How many of you got to walk in forgiveness? You can't be carrying baggage. Some of y'all married 10, 15, 18 years. You got more baggage. And you know, you holding it so you can just call it out on them. I can't let this go. Why? Because when they get in trouble, I'm going to call it all out. And you think you're hurting you, or hurting them, but who are you really hurting? You're hurting yourself. Because this gets heavy. He said, I don't know why I feel so weighted in this relationship. 
I don't know why this is so hard. You got to let this stuff down. Next slide, please. Letting go of toxic baggage can what? Transform your health. Some of us getting sick because of baggage that we holding. How many know it takes a lot of energy to walk in unforgiveness? You ever been mad at your spouse? Come on, just be real with me. Don't have to raise your hand. And you start finding yourself getting sick. Hmm? You're getting sick. You're like, man, it's not working like I'm supposed to. They're supposed to be getting sick. Come on, I know I'm not the only one. You're just mad. Mad at somebody in the relationship. Be like, I know. This is going to get to you because I'm going to hold out. And this stuff starts weighing you down. Next slide, please. Understand this. <laughs> you see a couple right here. Marriage, right? Look at all the, they got, she got wounds. She got secrets. Expectations. I mean, no, unspoken expectations will mess up a marriage. Yeah. What, you know what unspoken expectation is? You should have known to do that. You should just know. You know, I've heard men say it. I've heard women say it. You should just know. You know how I am. So I'm supposed to be a mind reader now. Huh? So what? You making me God. Just know. You just ought to know. You know when you do this, you make me mad. Already signing motives to the person. How about just forgive him and say, you know, how about this? How about instead of, instead of being defensive, let's get vulnerable. How about we let some of this baggage down? How about we throw it down and say, you know what? Try this. Listen to me now. You hurt me when you did that. See, we don't want to be hurt. We don't want to let nobody else know that you hurt us. Are you with me? There's times when I know I've, we've been counseling couples and they come in and they're mad. We have like this love seat. And when they come in, I can tell how bad it is by how they sit. Because the love seat ain't but so big. But when they sit on the, one, on the other, one end, the other on the other end, and they try not to touch, and they're not trying to look at each other, I'm like, oh, we in trouble. Are you with me? Or if they come in and try to act like everything's all right, but when they start talking, they start looking like they want to box each other, oh, we in trouble. How many know? Wounds. How many know you got to give God your wounds? How many know you got to give God your fantasies? How high you think your relationship should be? Well, you just, you just supposed to be, some men may think, you just will be quiet. Every time I say something, just say, yes, sir. I said, let's go here. Yes, sir. You're supposed to be my robot. Just do what I, just, what I say. Be a good Stafford wife. And we laugh. Now it's been reversed because you have more women and more powerful positions, and now they want Stafford hu husbands. Amen? Stedman, you just want a Stedman husband. I know. But they think they are. They, some of y'all think they are. You want to know that because you want that. That type of relationship, do what I say. Just be there for, just support me. How many of you know you're there to make each other better? Are y'all getting something out of this? I hope you're getting something out of this, amen? Habits. How many know bad habits will mess up a relationship? Amen? Yeah, I'm crying too. <laughs> childhood hurts. How many know childhood hurts? You, 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 you got abused when you were 12 years old and you're dealing with them out of your 12-year-old hurt because you never allow God to heal that person. What do you mean? You're up there, you know, you having all of your, i never forget, I was talking to somebody and their financial counselor, they were supposed to help be helping us and they're supposed to have been Christian and they, right in front of me, right in front of me, some of you may think this is right, I think it's totally wrong. Because I'm like, we, I, we told them over and over, my wife and I, we said, we do everything together. Our names are on everything. Her name is on all of my stuff, all of my savings accounts, and my name's on all of her savings accounts. There ain't no secrets here. Are you with me? We're at that point of maturity. We started out that way. That means if we're going to pull apart, it's going to hurt. 
Are you with me? I can't go pull money out and she don't know about it. And she can't go pull money out and I don't know about it. Are y'all with me? And so the person sat there right in front of me and said, now, you need to get your own. You don't know how he going to act. I said, no, she ain't telling this person. And you need to do this and you need to do this. I'm thinking to myself, okay, wait, we about to give you money. I'm giving you an opportunity, amen. And now you're going to disrespect me right in front of my wife like I'm not here. My wife had to stop and say, no, no, we don't operate like that. Because if I do that, then he can do that. Are y'all with me? Uh oh, we got quiet in here, eh? Are you with me? Let me tell you something. Divorce should hurt. Because it's been meant to stay together. Are you with me? So I'm vested. She's on my mutual fund. She's on my retirement. Are y'all with me? So if we pull apart, guess it's cheaper. It's going to be really cheaper to keep her. Are you with me? I have extra motivation to work it out. Some of y'all got exit strategies. When I get in here, I'm all ready to go. I got this plane ready. I got this ready. I got this. Are, y'all, are y'all with me? But we started out in the beginning that we wanted, we said we're going to do this. We want to break some of the generational curses. Where maybe our moms and our dads had separate. Separate but equal. Now we wanted to integrate. Is that all right? How I many know integration is all right? Segregation will destroy some things. Because separate but equal it ain't really equal. Amen? Next one, please. Too often, look, look, what is this guy carrying? What do you see? Him? Anger, regret, doubt, mistrust, shame, fear, and pain. Too often we carry around these things from our past that hurt us the most. Don't let past pain rob you of your present happiness. You had to live through it in the past, and that cannot be changed. But if the only place it lives today is in your mind, then forgive. Everybody say forgive. Forgive. Let go and be free. Next slide, please. How many know it's time to unpack? Let go of the emotional baggage. Just throw it. So what I want you to do, right where you are, I want you to write some things down that you need to let go. Come on. Next slide, please. Next one. Go back one. Psalm 51 says, have mercy, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against you. Only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive. Notice it says in 1 John 1, 19, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's time for the cleansing time. Write down everything that you need to release for the year. Another scripture, Romans 12, verse 3. Let it go. This is your time to let it go. Write down everything you need to let go. If you're on Facebook Live, you're at home, write it down. Write it down. Write down what you're not, attitudes that you're not going to bring into the new year, mindsets that you're not going to bring into the new year. Write it down and watch what God's going to do. Watch what God's going to do. Next slide. Future success can be diminished by carrying baggage from the past. Let go of the excess baggage. Let it go. Just let it go. You see, I just laid it down, and now I can walk through the doors that God has for me. I can walk in and out of them because guess what? I'm not carrying the baggage. Sometimes you got to let it go. You got to let it go so you can walk through the doors that God's called you to walk through. Amen? Next slide. Okay, I'm going to stop here. You can't fly if your wings are holding the baggage of yesterday. Let go and fly. Now, we, we talked about uh, last year, end of last year. You're not called to be a pigeon, right? What are you called to be? And eagles what? They fly high. They soar. You're not just called to fly. You're called to soar. You can't soar carrying, carrying baggage. Let this stuff go. 
I hope you get through all that. I try to give you the word. I try to give you the images. I try to give you it all. But the bottom line out of all of it, you say, Pastor, I didn't get all the notes. It'll be up on YouTube. You'll get it there. Hey, man, the bottom line is this. It's time to soar. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it's time to soar. Hey, man, stand to your feet, everybody. It's soaring time. It's soaring time. If you're ready to soar, stand to your feet. Come on. Come on. Real quickly, I don't know about you, I'm ready to fly. I'm ready to fly. Amen? Up, up, and away. I'm ready for 2019. I'm ready for great things. I'm ready for release and breakthrough and increase. Amen? I'm not, I will not get in my way. You will not get in your way. This will be the year that you will excel and you will go for it at the next level. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on. That's something to praise God about. Amen. <laughs> Doubt, unbelief, out of here. Are you with me? Fear? Yeah. Are you with me? Resentment? Gone. Yeah. Jealousy? You know, I'm getting jealous because you got son and I don't got son. Gone. Envy? Out of here. Yeah. Don't you want to be free to rejoice with someone else? Yeah. Let's pray. Let's raise our hands to God in the sign of surrender. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence. And your presence is fullness of joy and life forevermore. And God, we just praise you for what you're doing. We yield. I pray, God, that in some way, something I said or done on today would minister to your people to let them know the importance of transforming. And that you would bring forth the transformation in their hearts and in their minds right now. Men and women, those that are on Facebook Live, those that are on YouTube, those that wherever they may, they're sitting here in this, in this sanctuary, God. Lord, you bring forth transformation in Jesus' name. Come on, saints, in Jesus' name. One more time for the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And if you believe God's done something in your life, go on and give him some praise.